February 1st, Josh McDowell. Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. For more than 50 years, Josh has brought instruction and encouragement to youth, families, churches, leaders, and individuals. He's an everyday language man who helps prepare people for the life of faith and the work of the ministry. Josh has delivered about 27,200 talks to more than 25,200,000 people in 126 countries. On this date, in 2016, Josh published The Beauty of Intolerance. In fact, he has also written or co-authored 151 books. World Magazine named Josh's book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, one of the 20th century's top 40 books. But Josh wasn't always on the top. Here's his story. A broken home without a godly father is not the end of the story. If we allow God to lead us into the future, he has designed for us. One night during a church service, Josh McDowell shared his testimony. Growing up, my father was the town drunk. I'd go to school and my friends would make jokes about my dad downtown in the gutter, making a fool of himself. He went on to tell the church congregation how his father's alcohol habit had wreaked havoc on his family throughout his entire childhood. We lived on a farm and I'd go out to the barn and I would see my mother, whom I loved very much, lying in the manure in the gutter behind the cows where my father had yanked the air hose off the pipelines and just beat my mother until she was so weak and bloody she couldn't stand up. Josh continued, describing the memory of his eight-year-old fist balled up and pounding on his drunk father as hard as he could as he shouted, when I'm strong enough, I'll kill you. All I ever wanted as a kid was for my father to quit hurting my mother and I couldn't stop it, Josh said. He recalled arriving home one evening as a high school senior whose graduation was just weeks away. As he stepped into the heaviness of their home, he could hear his mother weeping in her own bedroom and he ran to her bedside. She was lying in her bed, her head on a tear-stained pillow. Son, your father has broken my heart, she said, as tears of despair rolled down her weary face. I have lost the will to live. All I want to do is live until you graduate, and then I just want to die. 61 days later, Josh graduated from high school, and the following Friday, his mother passed away. Josh told the congregation, my mother died of a broken heart, and my father broke it, and I hated him for it. After decades of tragedy, Josh slammed the door of his heart on God and hated his father for the indescribable pain he had caused. Whether God existed or not, I couldn't care less, he said. But on December 19, 1959, God the Father broke into Josh's bitter heart when a college friend told him about Jesus and what he was like. It changed my life, Josh said. Within six months to a year, my entire life was transformed. Not long after, Josh was in a serious car accident and he had to stay with his father. While still strapped to his bed, the ambulance dropped him off. His father walked into the room. Every muscle in my body tightened, Josh said. As Josh's dad paced back and forth next to his bed, Josh noticed two things. His dad was sober and he was crying. Two things Josh had never seen from his father his entire life. His father leaned over Josh's bed, tears of regret falling onto Josh's face. And he said, son, how can you love a father such as I? Josh replied, Dad, six months ago I hated you. I despised you. But I have come to know Jesus Christ 
as Savior and Lord, and I have learned one thing, that God became a man and his name is Jesus, and he is passionate about a personal relationship with you. That night, at his son's bedside, his father, the town drunk, became a fool for Christ. And over the remaining 14 months of Josh's father's life, he introduced more than 100 other people to Jesus. As Josh shared these words, the congregation erupted in applause. As it says in Psalms 103, two through four, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, crowns you with love and compassion. In many families, there is an imperfect story that has caused pain and sorrow. Is there anything from your family that is holding you back in your relationship with God? Today, are you willing to ask God to heal your broken heart and lead you into the future he has designed for you? A broken home without a godly father does not have to be the end of your story. Chuck Stecker here. I'm the teaching pastor at Summit Church in Centennial, Colorado, and also the executive director of A Chosen Generation. You know, as I listened to Josh's story, and I had the privilege of narrating this, there was a lot that became very, very personal for me in the process. But if you remember in the story, Josh's father said, how could you love a father like me? He was asking his son that question, but I believe deep in his heart, he was asking, how could God love a father like me? Because that's the question he really wanted to know. And by Josh being able to answer him with the truth of Jesus Christ, the story tells us, and I've had the privilege of meeting Josh and being as he shared this story, that his own father came to know Christ. You know, that was the story of my dad, who believed that the gospel message was true. And it was true for everyone, but perhaps him, because of all the things he had done and the fact that he too was been a drunk and he was in prison. But a night in March in 1997, when my father heard the truth, he accepted Christ for the first time in his life. The real question that we have on today's challenge is, is there somebody that you need to forgive so that God can use you for all that he has planned for you. Like Josh, he couldn't do it in Josh McDowell's life if there was hardness in his heart. I would say the same thing about me. Until I came to that moment of forgiving my father and really acknowledging that he had done the very best he could, then I don't think God was going to use me. Is he done? Gosh, I hope not. But I wanna ask you that question. Is there someone you need to forgive perhaps your own father, from not being the man that you wanted him to be. Do you need to forgive him and then ask God to forgive you? You know, a lot to be done today, isn't there, men? First of February, let's get started right. God bless you. 